me, you're going to ask me questions about your creative process. And if you, you know, if you happen to um, forget and ask me a question about my creative process, I'm going to be like a really good girlfriend and make it all about you. <laughs>
Okay, so it's not an evil thing. You know, we see this as a evil thing. I have to kill it. I have to you know, get control of it. No, it's just, it's just, you know, like you don't need to hold your mom's hand when you cross the street. Or if you do, you maybe need to keep her, you know, comfort her. But, you know, you used to, when you were little, you held your, you know, you caretake your parents' hand. You know. And now you probably don't need to do that. You can let go of some of those important things that have sort of you've grown up. Yeah. yeah. So, so what, what, how do we get over those? Or how do we work with that? Regular practice is really good. Regular practice, daily practice, every day. In one of these books, it says five minutes a day is better than an hour a week. You know what I mean? Five minutes a day. So working every day for five minutes is better than say, I'm gonna work an hour on Saturday morning. Okay? The regular daily practice. It's just like an exercise, you know? Daily practice. Okay? What is the book? So yeah, so I'm not gonna be here. So I'm not gonna be here next week because of uh, music camp, band camp. And then the following week I have to go back to Los Angeles. So um, I have some books, like if you, I don't know, I really like to read books about writing. So here's some good ones. Um, there are lots and lots of millions and millions and millions of good books about writing. Here are three that I happen to be looking at right now. One is a book called Daily Rituals, and it's, who is it by? Mason Curry, and it's just, you know, the stories of great artists and how they work or try to work every day. You know, does anybody know, the, has anybody heard of the writer, um, what's his name? Trollop, Anthony Trollop. Famous writer, novelist, lived a long time ago, maybe in the 1800s. Uh, he was famous for like setting a timer and having a word output, you know, X number of words per hour every day. And people are really amazed that he could do that. He wrote lots and lots of novels, and they're really good novels. And in this book, he talks about how he probably got the habit from his mother, Frances Trollope, mother of six, with an invalid husband, who would get up at like four in the morning and write for a certain amount of hours every day. So just knowing that, like, wow, people have these habits. And if you're an artist adopting a habit like this uh, to sort of keep yourself on track is a really good thing. The second book, of course, is The War of Art which is a really great book by Stephen Prescott. I was looking at it today and I just happened to open to the page. I thought, oh my gosh. And it says, the best and only thing that one artist can do for another is to serve as an example and an inspiration. I thought it was pretty cool. And this book, um, I just picked up The Little Book of Talent. It's a pretty good book. I like, you know, they're all like the same size and they all have a little bit of red in the cover. Um, that they're portable, and this has all these kinds of little short things that, that help you so you stay focused. And it does talk about how five minutes a day is better than one hour a week if you're marketing, if you're sort of budgeting your time. So those are good books. So, you know. anybody else have any questions? Answers? Yes? Well, you were talking about the cooler, about when the hunter went out. Yes. The voices he heard were, in fact, company. Right. You know, yeah. And uh, I was thinking this week about the absence of silence in our lives these days. Right. Uh, in most people's lives. Right. Um, and uh, without that silence, I, I think it's something you said. I, when I sit down to write, I try to listen to what uh, the characters are saying, telling me. Right. right. But that listening cannot be done if there's no silence. And, and, and maybe. Maybe. What? Maybe. That, you said that listening cannot be done if there's no silence. Yes. I'm just put, uh, footnoting that for what okay. I I was just thinking about that I, I, I sit down and write. Right. Just, it, gives, it gives me space. It, it gives me right. like, space right. between the chatter right. and the real place. Right. So how do you find the space? If you have a busy life, you know, I mean, you could live in a noisy apartment, okay? So a lot of us do, right? 
there are a few of us, I don't know, I don't have a country house, but you know, some of us might. Um, you might live in a noisy apartment or have noisy neighbors upstairs, downstairs, or outside. You might have, you know, responsibilities to other family members, and they might be noisy. Um, how do you create this food? I mean, you can here in the midst of, ch of outside noise. I mean, the noise that you need to focus on doing something about is the noise in here, right? Yeah, yeah. So, we know, so if you have noisy neighbors and you can wear earplugs and focus, it's the chatter in here that makes it difficult. Even in this short writing time, it's like, 
Right, right, right. How much you can accomplish in a short time as opposed right. to a one hour, three hour block? No, but I'll tell you why. I recently, well, recently, a year ago, started learning to play the banjo. And I have a very busy day. And I also play other instruments. So I was learning something new. I only had five minutes a day. I would sit down, I mean, this is, I read that from the book. But this, I would sit down and just do it five minutes a day, every single day. If you practice something every single day, it creates a groove. If you just practice it once a week, say you want to eat healthy. I'm only going to eat healthy on Sunday. No, I want to eat healthy. I'm going to add something healthy into my diet every single day. You see how it's different? It's a different kind of thing. You get into a habit. Your mind gets into a habit. Your mind, your mind you work every single day, even if it's just for a little amount of time. Your mind starts working on your work when you're not working on it. You carry it around with you all the time. See? I do yoga uh, five days a week. My mind is doing yoga more often seven days a week. And even when I'm not thinking about it, I mean that yoga friend. You know? So yeah, so just think of try it, you know. Right. I mean, if you only have, because people with busy schedules sometimes only have five minutes a day. Use that five minutes a day. Don't wait to do that, you know, thing you want to do one day a week. Because you won't be in the habit. Your muscles won't be. Now think of running also. You're going to run for five minutes a day. It's better than trying to run for an hour every Saturday. Discouraging you from taking an hour a day if you have it. Like you don't only yeah, drag exactly. five minutes a day, exactly. but like some exactly. people just don't have time. Exactly, exactly. What's your name? Samantha. Samantha. Exactly, Samantha. Right. It's, we're not saying only do five minutes a day. We're saying if you only have five minutes, but we're, we're not being discouraged from doing an hour or longer. Yeah, definitely. If you have an hour, great. If you have two hours, fantastic. Definitely.
know, everything else is like, well, let's see. You know, but that's the goal. But that can be the goal. Because with your journalism, with your articles, you have deadlines. And I think you're very good because you're a professional, but you're very good at making those deadlines. So we are questioning here, like, oh, is she a slouch? Is she going to make a deadline? You know what I mean? So we're not, we're going to take our hand off that, you know, and we trust that you can do it. But what we want to do is encourage you to show up every day for those things that maybe right now are getting pushed out of the, totally off the table because you don't feel like you have time to do it. You see, we still want to find a way to get in the seat at your table, even if it's only for five minutes of really concentrating. for negotiating when you're working on multiple projects? Like right now I'm writing two plays and a book. Same time. At the same time. Yeah. At the very same time? More, I mean, not, I won't sit down and write all three at once. <laughs> okay. But in my life, those are three ongoing projects. Great. Like so it's, I do, have you ever heard of something called a lazy Susan? Yes. Great. I love this. Okay. This part of my name. Great. So the lazy Susan, or the dim sum wheel. A fortune. I mean, you know, you know that thing when you go into a restaurant. The lazy Susan, that maybe your mother or your caregiver has. JB says, we have only one more minute. So the lazy Susan, um, you put your projects, different parts of the lazy Susan, you use some effort sitting in one spot, and you turn, and for five minutes a day, you work on your play, number one. And you turn the wheel, and Ten minutes a day, you work on your novel or your book. And then you turn the wheel, and 15 minutes a day, you're working on your second play. Or you can do it week number one, you're working on your first play. Take a break from that. Week number two, you're going to work on your novel. Take a break from that. Week number three, you work on your second play. You see? Yeah, I work on several projects projects at once and I sometimes do a day I'm working on this project then tomorrow I'm going to work on this one and the next day I'm going to pick up right up on that one for a couple of days in, in the pieces. Yeah. It can be done. Anybody else? We have like 30 seconds. 15? Did I talk about the books? Yes. So, no, Black Power. <laughs> Sorry, I love doing that. Black Power. It means your time is up. <laughs> That's what it really means.